Thank you. Uh, Mario, if I sit in the middle, then I can easily switch from uh, side to side. Um, en deze twee uh, mannen hebben uh, uh, een jaar geleden ongeveer een project gestart. En dat heet Ondo Tropica. Vanavond zullen ze daarmee optreden in de Apollo hier om ongeveer half negen. Ik denk dat je iets minder monitor moet geven, anders gaat hij rondzingen. Um, en uh, ik wil even van tevoren met ze praten. Uh, hello, uh, Will, welcome. Hello, good afternoon, how are you doing? I'm fine. Mario, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, I want to start with Mario, if you don't mind. Mario, when did you first meet Will and what was your first impression? Well, uh, William had been already living in Colombia and uh, I heard some of his stuff uh, as a producer, as a DJ and as with his uh, uh, own uh, projects. And I always find it very nice. We finally met uh, around uh, three years ago. And uh, yeah, we had lots of common interest around like record collecting and the kind of music we enjoyed. So I think that was uh, our meeting point was through like uh, common tastes, you know, like that we had uh, in common. Mm -hmm. Was this in Medellin or in Bogota? This was, uh, we met in Bogota, but uh, William was living in Cali, which is a city like eight hours away. So uh, yeah, we actually met in Bogota. And uh, Will, when did you first come up with the idea to start Ondo Tropica? And what is Ondo Tropica? Okay, well, uh, we met, um, I got to know Mario's music through a mix he put on SoundCloud, and um, we got in touch with each other, and Mario had been working with an organization called the British Council, um, and he worked with um, with his group Frente Cumbero, yes. and uh, with a producer from England, um, Jamaican, no, it's not Jamaican, it's from South America, uh, it's uh, Guyana, Guyana um, Mad Professor, so yeah, yeah. He, he had made a record with Mad Professor, and we were like, hey, we should do a collaboration, and he had a connection with the British Council. I don't know how you had that connection. <laughs> so uh, we started thinking about a project together, and we managed to find like funding from uh, the British Council to make make a record. Yeah. And um, well, the idea was a collaboration between myself and Mario, but um, rather than do something with just like us, we wanted to have an intergenerational project. So we invited um, over 40 musicians from Colombia. Uh, from people who worked in the 1960s and 70s, big names that now maybe have been like a little bit forgotten, and we just we put the name on the top of them. What What is so fascinating about the project I found is that you took uh, musicians from from Colombia from from way back, all all the musicians like uh, Antonio Velasquez, and, and but also younger people, and that it is not a nostalgic record. The record that you've made with on the Tropica is a very modern sounding record, and it also it sounds almost like sort of a uh, a statement, so that we want to put this kind of music on, on the map again. And what is also fascinating about it is that it's, it's not just cumbia, you range into a lot of styles. Um, was the idea to make a statement or did you just want to make a great record? Well, I think it has a little bit of both. I think when, you, when, you, um, when your artistic view is complemented with a sort of political statement as well, behind how music works, like commercially for example, then I think you can uh, have a little bit of both things and impact both things. So yeah, we wanted to to just show that, I mean, from our personal points of view, is like uh, music doesn't have to be so categorized into like uh, years, you know, like the music that we listen to and enjoy and love was maybe recorded in the 50s and the 60s. And who cares if it's already been 60 years since that happened? We're part of that generation as well. And those other musicians are like also part of our generation and we're part of our generation. And we're sort of in a bigger view of just keeping like a, smaller side on, on decades or like styles. Yeah. So we thought that we could just do it like that and uh, luckily it went out very smooth and very organically between all of us. Now um, there were about 40 musicians who worked uh, on, on, the, on the Tropica eh, in, in the studio. You actually recorded in the legendary Disco Fuente studios, didn't you? Yeah, I mean part of the recording was basically um, we wanted to show that Colombia had more than cumbia because maybe People know Colombia best for like this sort of Afro-Indigenous European music, cumbia. But uh, there's a lot more going on you know, on the Pacific coast, and historically, Colombia has been very uh, hidden to the world. You know, a lot of these styles like curulao um, have, have kind of been hidden because they're just not accessible. They're not really even big in Colombia. You know, they're things that are very regional. So it was like the idea was to bring all these regional styles together in, in one record um, and record in a, in a location which for me really is like the Abbey Road of Columbia. It's a, it's a record studio that was built in the 1960s. Um, it's one of the first major record studios 
of Colombia. It's really unchanged. It's been unchanged for the last like 40, 50 years. Yeah. And um, it's also a bit like a ghost ship, like walking into a big uh, empty boat, you know, with ghosts because it's, it's not really being used. It's a little bit deteriorated in the sense that no one's really, you know, this kind of music, this was like La Riqueza, like the, the, the richness of, of Latin America was in musicianship, it was in arrangement, it was in, uh, you know, fire and talent of young people in these studios. And these sort of labels in the 50s and 60s gave a voice to a generation that wouldn't have had it otherwise. And now the problem is we're in a new era in all of these developing countries where it's just about like cheap little studios, it's about auto-tune, it's about listening to music on mobile phones. And, uh, you know, this is part of that old sort of generation and old wind that we're just trying to keep going a little bit. And, and you recorded analog, didn't you? Yeah, so uh, we took all, uh, I don't know, like maybe two tons of equipment from my studio, like boxed it up and, and took all the tape recorders to this place uh, to, because they didn't have their tape recorders working anymore. But the important thing was that we found the original producer, Mario Rincon, who was one of the um, understudies in the 1950s of the studio owner, and he uh, was with us uh, throughout the recording and giving us kind of ideas and uh, he was he was really worked at the studio from like 1962 through you know through to the 80s so it was good to have him there. Okay, now you've got this great record. It's 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 a it's a double album, isn't it? It's got, it's got loads and loads of tracks. You've got loads of musicians, but now you have to go on the road. So have you taken? Are we going to witness 40 musicians there in the <laughs> Apollo tonight? Well, no, of course not. Uh, we have to, to make an actual band. I mean, for example, we recorded like, with five different pianists, you know, so uh, different uh, sax players, trumpet players. So now we came uh, here with an eight-piece band, which is like kind of um, balance between like the older masters and like a newer generation. Uh, so, yeah, like what uh, we recorded was compromising ages between like 80, 82 years old, the oldest guy, uh, and 25 year old, uh, the youngest. So, yeah, you'll see a lot of different uh, ages and uh, approaches to music on stage. And the band is called Los Areales de Onda Tropica? Yeah. Doesn't that mean the unrealistic guys of Onda Tropica? Well, the, yeah, I guess it does. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 is yeah. that what it means? It's like a sort of like a nickname. I mean, Onda Tropica is just the name of the project. And we just made up this, this uh, name, Los Irreales, yeah, which is like the, the unreal. Unreal. Yeah. Unreal. unreal. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you, you, you're very un, uh, you're very real to me, and very glad that you could make it here and that you're going to perform tonight. Um, if people who are watching now and uh, listening to you, um, what can they es expect tonight? What have you lined up for them? How can you warm them up to come and see the show tonight? Well, just to really realize, like first, you know that the, this uh, Colombian styles, um, very beautiful styles, and maybe not so known to people um, and there was a time when reggae was not so known to people there was a time when Afrobeat was not so known to people so you know this is a time where Colombia musically is really opening up and it's a really good opportunity to see people who are you know in the night you know now like 75 years old 76 years old they're people that um, you know they've spent their whole time that whole career dedicated to this music so it's a really opportunity to see see those lovely people perform Okay. Well, one last mean question to you, Mario. I always like to end interviews with a mean question. Suppose an interviewer like me, you know, like wise nose, like wise hairs like me, comes up to you and says, you know, what, you, what, what Will is basically doing is some, something like Ry Kudra has done with the Buena Vista Social Club. Or, hey, no, no. or, 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 or Paul Simon or Paul Simon did with Graceland. What he's basically doing is stealing your culture to get rich. What would you answer? Well, I would say that <laughs> Look at the what? Look at the death. <laughs> no, I just say that, I mean, uh, it just takes uh, people who are interested into music to open up new heads, you know, like, uh, I just see a person that is, like, really into music, and you don't see, like, uh, Ray Kuder went to live to Cuba for his past six years, or he made a life there, you know, or, like, uh, he went to record with uh, Ali Farkature, and he just recorded a record, and he was out of there. And I just think that we're just uh, musicians that uh, found throughout through Colombian music our way of expressing ourselves. And not only Colombian music, but the way it connects with other Caribbean styles from Jamaica, from Trinidad, from Haiti, from Cuba, and from Africa, of course. So we're just like uh, uh, music lovers, melomanos, uh, record collectors, and we just like to see how things interact and, and are like can be connected organically musically. So 
No, I, I'm just uh, great to have this partner on the on the project, of course. Okay, thanks very much, uh, Will. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Maria. Thank you very much. Uh, en jullie allemaal bedankt voor het luisteren. Deze twee geweldige mannen. Ik kan niet genoeg benadrukken. Ga vanavond onder Tropica zien. Want ik denk dat het echt een spektakel wordt. Dat jullie heel veel plezier kunnen hebben daar in de Apollo om ongeveer half negen. Thanks guys. Thank you. Maria, good luck. Hè? And uh, if you